There we go. She's done. You can't have a high blood pressure around alpacas. I don't think it's possible. It's comparable to cashmere. They don't have teeth in the front on the top. Uh, llamas are twice the size of an alpaca and twice as aggressive. Twenty-two natural colors, ranging from from white to black. They will run till they die. Corey's actually one of our highest quality boys. My name is Sandy Baxter. My name is Chuck Baxter, and we own an alpaca ranch. So initially, it was uh, big time investors that got into the alpaca business. They put up a lot of money to import alpacas initially. So I think the first import was in 1984. And they, they had like four or five maybe imports, big imports between 1984 and 1995 timeframe. And even to this day, you can't import alpacas from Peru. Hi buddy. Most alpacas like faces. They don't like to be uh, touched on the heads. Alpaca fiber is stronger than wool. It's 4% chance that you're allergic. It's fire retardant. Each one has a very different personality. It's just like your cats. There, there are a lot of the cat features. In Peru, they actually do eat alpaca. Here in the United States, we, we tend not to. To give you some sort of a reference, alpacas generally will live to be 20-ish. Um, there are two different breeds of alpaca. There's a Surrey and a Wakaya. <laughs> they don't like the wind. That's the only thing they don't like. We had lightning strike the ground one time, and we all felt it, and the animals did nothing. Alpacas go to the bathroom in the same place every day, all day. Once composted, makes extremely good fertilizer. In fact, we had a guy come and filled up his entire van because he has a worm farm, and he says there's nothing better they're very calm animals, they're very cool. They're, they're fun to be with. They don't have teeth in the front on the top and they like to rub that soft palate on anything they could rub it on. They're not too busy of an animal, but they're busy enough. So out here is where we keep our uh, solar panels. But we've got 78 panels able to, uh, to produce about 100% of our needs for the year. Our electric bill was uh, in the summertime over $900 per month. After solar, that drops down to about three to $400. So just doing the math, there was uh, no reason not to go with solar. It just makes financial sense. So we're gonna start with the boys. This is Raphael. Raphael is here for breeding purposes only. The guy sitting next to him that you can't hardly see, his name is uh, Jason. Jason actually has a great grandfather that sold at auction back in 2000 for $650,000. So this guy is Sir Lancelot. He has been uh, one of our primary stud males for several years. This is Oscar. This guy is Onyx. Him and Leo are both about almost two years old now. This one over here is Jerry. Jericho's his real name, we call him Jerry. This guy is Corey McCloskey the alpaca. Corey's actually one of our highest quality boys. Hi buddy, hi buddy boy. Okay, so this is where we keep all the girls, all of our females. We keep them uh, more together than the males. The males have a tendency to want to uh, prove who the alpha is pretty much all day, every day. The, uh, the girls, not so much. They're a much more social creature than the boys are. 
an alpaca female doesn't cycle regularly. They don't go in and out of heat. They are what we call cycle on demand. So when the boy is introduced to the girl, he's got an orgling noise that he makes to prom prompt her to lay down to breed, and that's when she's gonna cycle, which is why we keep the boys and girls totally separated. If she got pregnant during that first breeding, she already knows she's pregnant and she will spit and scream and kick and will not want to lay down and breed. Also, a female alpaca gestation period is 11 and a half to 12 months, so much longer than humans. They have the ability to pause their pregnancy at will. They can put their pregnancy on hold, put the delivery on hold, until they feel comfortable that the conditions are right. So it's not, uh, not uncommon for alpaca females to do that. Okay, so these are our babies. We keep all of our babies all together. These are all nursing with moms right now and they'll stay with moms for uh, about six months. We, uh, at one point, we tried hard to breed for color and uh, we found it was not worth trying to do. 22 natural colors ranging from, from white to black. For example, Onyx, pure jet black boy, his mom and his dad are light gray. If you've got a gray alpaca, that tells me that it had some black in it at some point in time and it had some white in it at some point in time. And you could get any combination. Breeding for color is, is just doesn't work all that well. Okay, so this, uh, this building, Sandy and I put together uh, about two years ago. Half of this building is now our store. We have our own store here on the farm. So this is yarn that we make from our animals. Out of our, uh, our finer alpacas, we make a lot of yarn. Both our daughters make these. We make uh, sweaters and shawls and scarves and hats and all kinds of different things from the yarn. We make socks. Socks are the best thing in, for alpacas. They've been selling them for a long time. We sell a lot of yarn to, uh, to folks who crochet and knit. So yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people who have our yarn and make different things. This half is our hay barn, our new hay barn. Okay, we can stack 300 bales in here. Alpacas uh, have kind of a finicky system, if you will, uh, and, and need to have a grass hay. A typical adult alpaca will eat uh, two and a half, three pounds a day, which comes out to about one and a half of these bales per month. For the most part, we feed our alpacas Timothy hay. It's got just the right amount of protein in, in uh, Timothy that they need. Too much protein, uh, an alpaca will get fat, and they are susceptible to fatty liver disease. They need to have that grass hay. So we do have a well, knowing that we have water and I can use what I need is pretty important to me. The pipe goes way down into the ground, uh, about 480 feet to be exact. From here, it comes into these tanks and then it gets pumped over to our tank. We've got a big reservoir in the ground. So all of our water that comes to our house comes out of this reservoir right here. And that's uh, it's a pretty deep reservoir. It's, it's nice to have a well, very nice. So we shackle their ankles for their protection. And then we lay them down. While we have them down, we're gonna check their teeth. If they need to be trimmed, we'll take care of that. We trim all their toenails. And then he can start the shearing operation. He always starts in the belly. People tend to believe that shearing an alpaca is harmful to them. And we've had people actually come and tell us that. We've had PETA people come and tell us that we're torturing animals. First of all, not shearing an alpaca will cause that animal to die, period. They can't survive our heat. 
with a full fleece. It doesn't hurt the animal. When we shear the alpaca, we put soft shackles on their arms, their feet, and we stretch them out so that they're laying flat on the ground and then we can shear one side, roll them over and shear the other side. So by not allowing them to jump around and move, they're not likely to get hurt physically. And so the whole operation is actually, is actually pretty friendly to the animal. Once Jason has the uh, belly hair off, he's gonna work his way up and uh, he's gonna take off what we call the blanket. And that's the most usable fiber on an alpaca. They can pull it off, put it into the bucket. <clears throat> when, when you touch the fiber, it's, it's almost untouchable. I mean, you, can, you know you got your hand there, but you can't feel it. It's very lightweight. It's very soft to the touch. While we've got the alpacas down, we're gonna go ahead and do shots and our uh, annual maintenance on them as well. She's done. Now she'll go, go get weighed again. Our shearer can shear an alpaca in eight minutes flat. So it's very minimal time that they're being stressed. It's not harmful to them. In fact, it's necessary. They have to be shorn. Hi, Onyx. Hi, buddy boy. Hi, Onyx, buddy. Hi, Onyx, buddy. You coming over to say hi, Corey? Hi, Corey. Hi, Corey, buddy. Hmm? So we first got introduced to alpacas in 2005. Uh, we spent about a year learning everything we could about alpacas and uh, visiting different uh, alpaca ranches. And in 2006, we picked up our first alpacas. I think our first year, we, we had nine or 10 animals after our first year. We were not farmers prior to owning alpacas. That's not what we did. In fact, I work a 40 hour a week job as an FAA inspector. So we now have a farm. It's a whole different world. That's something we never would have done 20 years ago. We're not, uh, we're not real young anymore. So we, we see the importance of staying active. You can't have a high blood pressure around alpacas. I don't think it's possible. It's just, uh, they're, they're that calming that they relax you just to be around them. <laughs>